Black Rage, note, this was written the day after the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man murdered by a police officer. As I sit in front of my computer, Lauren Hill's Black Rage is playing, and it is exactly what I am feeling. My heart is heavy. I feel so much negativity that it is pressing down on me like a weight. I feel compressed into my chair, the only relief coming from moving my fingers against these keys and telling my truth. I am sitting in a virtual room with other black women who are feeling the same things, whose friends are feeling the same things. We range from all over the world and yet we share this melancholy truth. We share this invisible, unbearable weight that makes our hearts race, eyes shed tears, and words fall silent. Two weeks ago or so, I chose to step away from Facebook when the Arbery murder became a situation. I urged black people on my friend list to not subject themselves to that video. I urged them to guard their hearts, minds, and souls. Their mental health was at stake. But I thought Facebook was the problem until Instagram became an issue and then Twitter. And then I remembered the issue has always been the heart of people and never the platform for which I am confronted with reality. And now I'm logging out of everything and wiping tears and pounding keys furiously. I am trying to find an escape for these emotions that black Americans across the world are feeling. Even as I write this, I have to stop to text my brothers to check on them and make sure they're okay because they are simply black men. I chose to step away because I felt it begin to eat at me with that one story. I remember the nights I cried myself to sleep four years ago when Philando Castile was murdered in front of his child. I remember the sounds of my welling into my pillow asking God why they hate us so much. I remember being in the shower as a kid and scrubbing at my skin, hoping to lighten it just a little. I remembered my cousin and the tears began to fall again. I had to protect myself. I know that I have triggers. I know that I can slip into a PTSD episode and not come out of it for days. I know that I am here alone and if I'm not careful, no one will know something is wrong. Just one tweet, one post, one image can bring back all of those memories. I'm not one to censor others' right to post, but I am one to censor what I allow my spirit to take in. I feel things deeply, especially the struggles of my people. I would be foolish not to guard myself, and yet, even the greatest of guards are subject to destruction. Tears fall from my face as I realize I don't even know the young man who died yesterday's name. But I know what his face looks like against the pavement. I know that he couldn't breathe. I know that he is dead. I know that he didn't kill anyone. And that is enough to rock my soul to its core. It's enough to make the strong black man that I call mine to weep all morning long. It's what caused friends all across this country to send texts checking on friends and family. I am shifting from feeling to feeling in ways that couldn't even be considered smooth. I am feeling this black rage. I am feeling these things and I don't know what to do other than to write. I don't know what to say so I don't speak. I listen to Lauren sing. I listen to the words she says and I think this song is over five years old. Old. And it resonates today as if she wrote it last night. I haven't watched a video. I haven't seen a news report. I haven't given a commentary my attention. I have done everything in my power to keep myself from seeing it all because I know the dark place in which it will take me. I don't want that for myself, much less the other men and women who share my plight. I don't want us to feel this collective trauma that looms over us. I want so badly to shield all of us from these images and sounds of our brothers and sisters suffering. I struggle deeply with the idea that my people are hurting with no true comfort in this world. I've run out of words to say to encourage myself. To say this could never happen to me is a fallacy I cannot indulge. We are in the middle of a global pandemic, and yet there is no moratorium on taking our lives. 
There is no justice for our murders. There is only hate, judgment, and judicial complacency. And I'm exhausted. We're exhausted. Langston Hughes once said, Negroes, sweet and docile, meek, humble, and kind, beware the day they change their minds. <laughs>